Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Learn Competitive Programming with Codechef. If you desperately want to master competitive programming and get your hands dirty in data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Every week, we upload problem explanation from Codechef's contests, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live interactive sessions. But before we start off, here's a reminder for you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Great. Now that you have subscribed, let's get started. So here's the problem statement, guys. So we'll be given two positive integers, x and y, as well as another integer, k. And we want to update x in a sequence of steps to make it equal to y. Fine. And in a single update, we can either perform one of the two operations given. Fine. So either we could multiply x by k or we could subtract one from k. Fine. So let us take and quickly take an example here. So let's say I am given x equal to 2 and y equal to let's say 7 and k equal to 2 again. Fine. So now in the first operation, I could either set uh, x is equal to 2 minus 1. Fine. So decrement uh, x by 1 and this is 1 or I could either set uh, x equal to 2 into 2. This is 4. Fine. So out of any, uh, any of these two, I could either set x to be 1, that is decrement x, or I could multiply it by k and uh, set it to 4. Fine. So these are two choices that we are given in every operation. Now let convert x, y, k. Let convert be a function that takes three uh, parameters x, y, k with the minimum number of operations, the minimum number of steps that are needed to convert x to y using k. Fine. Now we need to compute convert x y k for a few test cases fine like again taking the above example what i can do is i can first uh, set x equal to 2 into 2 that is 4 in the first operation then in the second operation i could set 4 into 2 again so this becomes 8 this is my second operation and then x equal to 8 minus 1 that is 7 that is my third operation so i have converted x that was initially 2 to 7 that is y using three number of operations and using k. So the answer in this case comes out to be three. And this is the minimum number of steps. You can verify it as well. Fine. So this is the problem statement. So now let us move on to the approach. So one very easy, a very clear recurrence relation that we can come up with is that let f denote the convert function. That is just uh, for me to write it with ease. So f of x comma y, I'm just omitting k here. So f of x comma y is nothing but the minimum of uh, f of x minus 1 comma y and f of x k comma y fine and this plus 1 fine so this is a very clear recurrence relation this is literally converting the the two steps given in the question to a recursive relation so what this basically means is that in the first operation i have two choices either to decrement x by 1 so this is the first case and the second case is to multiply by k so this is the second case the second relation and the minimum of both of them fine and that plus one denoting that we have taken the first operation as well so this was a very clear recurrence relation that like most most of you would have come up with but now note that if i take the example of let's say x is equal to 4 y equal to 92 and k is equal to 3 now this was this is these are the values that are exactly same as the second test case of the problem so that's why i'm taking them now note that if I try to apply this recurrence relation here and if I just draw the recursion tree, so it will be 4, then I have two choices either to make it 3 or to make it 12. Fine. And whatever this subtree gives us, that plus 1 is the answer for 4 and the minimum of this subtree as well. Fine. So then for 3, I again have two choices that is 2 or 9. And for 12 also, I have two choices 11 or 36. Fine. Then for each of these four cases, I again have two choices that is 1 and 6. Here I have 8 and 27. Here I have 10 and 33. Here I have 35 and 108 and so on. Basically, this tree will just keep on expanding and this is not the optimal way. Like it's an overkill for the third test case which had huge numbers. Fine. So this is something not optimal and we can somehow apply dynamic programming to this, but that is something very complex, especially when you do it manually on a paper. 
in a paper like ZIO and especially when you are in the environment of an exam. So it becomes quite complex. So we are not considering dynamic programming here. So can I do something better than this that I don't need to make all of these calls? Well, I can. And the idea of the recurrence relation that we are going to use now is exactly the vice versa of the recurrence relation we used above. In the above case, what we did was in the first operation, we have two choices, right? But now I'll just reverse this process that in the last operation, I have two choices. So what I mean is that f of x comma y is nothing but again the minimum of the minimum of f of x comma y plus 1 and f of x comma y by k and this plus 1. Now why does this work and what it basically denotes is that if I can somehow reach y plus 1 then in the last operation I can simply simply decrement it by 1 and reach y or if I could somehow reach y by k then in the last operation I can multiply by k to reach y fine and the minimum of both of these and that plus 1 fine so this is a more cleaner recurrence relation y and this is easier also now this is because this recurrence relation will only be computed if y is a multiple of is a multiple of k fine so if in uh, technical terms if y mod k is equal to 0 well in that case we are going to compute this because let's say if we are at 30 and we know that k is 3 so we can come from 10 to 30 right but if k is 4 then there's no way we could have come like 30 by 4 is 7.5 so in the second last operation we cannot reach 7.5 right it's not an integer so y should be a multiple of k only in that case we'll compute this tree and notice that this uh, like y being a multiple of k is a very rare case so in like more than half of the cases we are only going to compute the first one so this like provides some ease for us because like in the above relation for every case i had to make two more cases but here in like more than half of the cases i'll only be making one so this time we are talking about y not x so i'll take 92 then to reach 92 i must have come either from 93 or 92 by k k was 3 here fine so 92 by 3 which is not an integer so that's why there is no other choice i would have come from 93 only fine then 93 is an integer so i'll make a call to 94 as well as 31 fine then 94 will make a call to 95 and it's not divisible by 3 so only one call and then 31 will also make only a call to 32 fine then but still note that this is again expanding a lot although not as much as the first recurrence relation but still it's expanding right so let us just try to prove if y is a multiple of k then it is always beneficial to uh, make a call only to y by k fine so like here when 93 was a multiple let's try to prove that there's no point making a call to this subtree fine although it is quite clear like greedily i can say that it is reducing this number drastically so this should be beneficial but it's not always correct so we'll try to prove that why is it always beneficial to divide so now notice like there's a quite basic proof to this like here notice that from 93 I came to 31 fine and then to 32 and here also from 93 I go to 94 then then since this is a multiple so it is guaranteed that this is not a multiple and this is not a multiple as well then 96 now this is a multiple and after this I can make a call to 32 fine so now notice that now the subtree of 32 will exactly match to that of 32 here fine so I have come with the same subtrees now the answer for these two will be the same and then the answer to 93 will be the minimum of these two so can i say that it is always beneficial to divide why because to reach to 32 from 93 in case of dividing i took two operations but in case of incrementing i took four operations now more formally can i say that on the right case when i was dividing i was taking one operation and then one operation to increment it so two in the case of right and in the left since it was a multiple so to reach the next multiple it will take me k operations to increment each by one so k operations and then dividing it by one so k plus one operations fine now in most of the cases in fact in every case when k is a positive and greater than or equal to two this is always smaller and even if i go up till 99 that is i don't divide at 96 but i again increment it 
So 96 to 97, then 98, then 99, and here I divide. Fine. So now notice that it took me three more operations here, and the number I ended up was like 99 by 3, that is 33. And now notice on the right subtree, I have already 32, and I can simply take one operation to reach to 33. Fine. So again, even if I don't divide at 96, I take it up till the next multiple of k. It took me three operations on the left subtree, that is k operations as to generalize, and only one operation on the right subtree. Fine. So basically, and this doesn't just go for 99. It also goes for 102, 105, and so on, 108 and all of those multiples of k. Fine. So that's why there's no point incrementing it. Because if we increment, we are taking more operations. So it's always beneficial to divide if it is a multiple of k. Now let us finally make the subtree and this is going to be the solution as well. So for y equal to 92, I make a call to y equal to 93. Then since 93 is a multiple and as we discussed, there's no point making a call to the plus one case. Let's always divide. So I end up with 31 and just delete it. So that is, yeah, so 31. And then 31 is not a multiple, so 32, then 33, then 33 is a multiple of 3, so I'll make a call to 11, then from 11 I can go to 12, then from 12 it's a multiple, so 4, and here note that we have, this was nothing but x, yeah, so here we can solve. So now notice that the reverse, that is 4, can be brought to 12 by multiplying, then we'll increment 11, then again multiply, so 33, then to 32 by decrementing, then 31, then multiply by 3 by k to get 93, and then simply decrement 1 to get 92. So this is the path that we have got, and the number of operations is nothing but the number of arrows. So this was 1, then 2 operations, then 3 operations, then 4 operations, then 5, then 6, then 7, and here we come to y. So the number of operations that we took, so operations were 7 and in other words I can say that convert x was given to us as 4, y was 92 and k was 3. So this is nothing but 7 and this these are the minimum number of operations as well. So yeah this was the answer and the approach. I hope you found it useful and just as a side note I'll leave the first as well as the third test case as an exercise for you. You can follow the same approach here to get the answers. Although I'll still punch down the test cases as well as the answers in the comment section. So this wraps up the video guys. So thanks for watching guys. If you like the video or just learned something new, don't forget to hit the like button and leave down a comment if you have any queries or suggestion or some feedback. You can also join our telegram channel. The link is in the description box below to stay even more updated. I am Bharat Singla signing off for now and I'll see you next time.